Hello there guys and gals, the Welsh Hunter here, back with another 100% achievement and trophy guide, and this time we are getting it all in. My aunt is a witch. Not a bitch, but simply a witch. My aunties are awesome. Love you. Um, anyway, this fun visual novel slash point and click adventure game was developed by Graven Visual Novels, published by Sometimes You, and is available to buy for £8.39. Now we play as Thomas, I think think his name is, uh, as he goes off to visit his auntie, who, just as obvious as the film Snakes on a Plane, is a witch, hence the title, My Aunt is a Witch. Yeah. So anyway, we go to visit, go on this wild adventure, and everyone has a great old time, apart from the times you can die and stuff, but fun is still had by all. Now as you heard, yes, this is a visual novel and a point and click adventure, so we will be slamming through the dialogue extremely quickly by mashing the A and the B button, not simultaneously, or the X and square button on the PlayStation, and also pointing and clicking to pick up items, etc. Now there are a few missable achievements, so it is important you follow the by, uh, guide <laughs> as best as you can so you don't miss anything. Six skulls that we need to grab and five coins we need to grab later in the game. Also, we will be saving the game at certain points to manipulate it in order to get other achievements and story progression. All in all, it's an easy yet enjoyable game that can be done within one to two hours. And so, with that being said then, let us begin. And as I said, with the dialogue here, you can just keep bashing the A button and you go through it quite quickly, but if you keep bashing the A and the B button as literally as quick as you can, it literally flies past it. So that's what I would do anyway. But otherwise, I'll leave you to enjoy for a moment.
So then, after five minutes of talking or so, we can finally begin. Now, as you, as you see, you can press the left trigger button to highlight interactable objects, but I don't use it much through the game. I'll explain the items best uh, that we need when we go through it. So click the only arrow there, we'll go down to a living room, click on the wolf rug, and we basically need to find some forceps. Now, they are located on the right in a drawer where the lamp is, as you can see. So go ahead, all you need to do is click that once, and that'll give us the forceps. So click on it once, then press the X button or square on PlayStation. That'll go into your inventory. Now how this works is you click on it, whatever item you need, you click on it once so that it's highlighted, then go to the left where it says take, and then click on that again to be able to use said item on whatever you need. This time, of course, it's on the wolf rug, so you click on that and you get El Fango Beanie. So now we can head to the left, um, so which goes into a kitchen. So first thing we need to do then, click on the cupboard, which is basically in the middle of the screen, and then click on an item actually in it. Sometimes it's you've got to get it, you know, actually spot on uh, the reticle, and then click on the sort of bigger cupboard to the right. For some reason, some weird plates are going to start going mad and trying to kill you. Nice. And once you survive that harrowing experience, go ahead and click up the up arrow. That'll take us to like this attic-y sort of thing. And, man, this cat's weird. Anyway, there's a bucket with a cloth in it. That's what we need. We need the cloth out of that. And then we can click on the right arrow button this time to go into this sort of little garden-y, uh, whatever the hell it's called. So click on the plant to the very right-hand side of the screen right there. And we basically need to get an item from there. So right in the back wall next to this angry-looking Mario plant, we need to grab the um, shears. And then what you can do is press the X button, go into your inventory, use those shears, again, press the item, and then click the take button, and then use it on that plant. Ah, oh, you made him sad. <laughs> you just ruined that plant's Christmas. Nice one. As every retail worker ever hears that. Anyway, click on the left, and then click the up button. Right there, we go into the library now. Of course, it's dangerous. Nobody goes to a library anymore. So once we get kicked out of the library, press the up button to go back into the library. Thank you for that, that was uh, very pointless. Click the book in the middle of the room there, that'll open it up. And we're gonna need something to put in said book. And take a little look at it later. And no, it's not gonna be a scanned picture of your butt that we're gonna be putting in, okay? Click on the bird, again we'll come back to him later. The cat could literally kill the bird, that's what they're there for, but this one's a lazy douchebag. Sounds about right. Uh, just slam through the dialogue here, and then there is a skull. We, like I said earlier, at the very bottom right-hand corner, there's the first out of six skulls. So it'll be very important to grab that before we head back up. And now we're into Auntie's room. Oh, no dildos on the wall or anything that I can see. Not that kind of witch. Um, anyway, uh, click on the left-hand arrow, and we go to this sort of little lovely little view right here. And then there is the second out of six skulls, basically right on the ledge. So again, make sure to pick that up. That should be a second out of six skulls. So now we can head back to the right, which will go back to Auntie's room. There is a glove right next to the bookcase on the right-hand side of the screen there. It's on the floor. So go ahead and pick that one up first. I don't know why there's only one glove. Where's the other glove, Auntie? Huh? Huh? And then in the on the left hand side next to the door there is a bin as well which has a leaf in it which we're going to take anyway and remember there is a third skull I'm saying remember this is the first time I'm telling you but high up top of the screen there is the third out of six skull so again at this point you should already have your three out of six skulls and then we can finally move on now it's very important actually here to make your first save so click on the icon the sort of wooden eye icon at the top of the screen, go to the S button, which means save, and save your game. Do it once, do it twice, I always make a backup save, because, well, you never know these days, do you? Everything likes to crap out on you very quickly. So, when we've done that, now we're going to click on the sort of 
uh, like a little letter by the tree and what you're going to do is just smash through this dialogue and you're going to get two options now basically we're going to be dying for the first time and it's always the top option so you can literally just slam through the dialogue as quick as you can pick the first button which says uh, you basically agree with her you remove the seal that makes us die and that gives us our first achievement of the game it's very harsh i mean the dude's a kid but <laughs> there we go if you got an auntie for a witch be expected to die that's just life advice i suppose me <laughs> So then, back at the main menu, go back into your load, and then of course load the game. Now remember, if you didn't make the save, you'd have to start again, and that's friggin' annoying. Right? <laughs> Am I right? Yes. Anyway, we're going to click on that same sort of letter by the tree, only this time, take your time. So you're going to go through the dialogue, but this time, make sure to not remove the seal. Pick the second option, but be very careful not to rush through. And remember to pick the second option, which is don't remove the seal. Unlucky Maka! So that pissed her off, but now we are good. So we're not dead, and we're going to carry on. So go into your inventory now, grab the skull from an interworld tree. The sort of, I don't know even what the hell that is, like a deer or something, like a fudged up deer. And then put it, interact with it, the bowl which is underneath said tree. And that's basically our first ingredient which we need. So now we can click on the down arrow, and then we can click on the down arrow again. And the down arrow for the third time. And now we need to find a cookie. So high up on the uh, sort of drawers there, there is a pumpkin. So click the pumpkin first. And that is where we find the cookies. Weird place to put cookies. But I'm not a witch, so I wouldn't really know. Go back into your inventory then. Use the glove. And then again, remember to take, uh, use the take option. And then remember the cupboard that we opened up earlier. Now we can grab that item of what's inside. Again, not sure what that other rubber glove is. I reckon witch has got a uh, anti witch has got a sex dungeon or something. I suppose. Anyway, click on the <laughs> right arrow. Now we're back in the living room. Now we're going to be using the cloth. So remember the cloth that we got from the bucket earlier on. So again, go on the take, and we're going to be using it on all three of the pictures on the back wall uh, to get a little bit of dust. So you'll have to go back into your inventory, grab the cloth, take it, use it on the picture. And again, so use it on all three pictures there. So after you've got the dusty ugliness of all three pictures, go down and then back in our room, we find our fourth out of six skull on the left hand side up in the bookcase there. So that should now be four out of six skulls for you. That's all we need for now. So we can go back down, go to the left, and then head on up. Up, baby. And then go ahead and go up once again. We're going to go back into the library. Now what we need is the sort of weird paper that's in the bird's mouth. And the way we do that is we need to go straight into our inventory and give him the dead mouse. Which he was in the cupboard a little bit earlier on. So grab him, take him, give him to the bird. And we're automatically going to get the item in which he dropped. And this is where it all comes in handy. So go back into your inventory. Grab the sort of weird writing on the paper. Whatever the hell that is. And then interact with the book. And now it's going to start getting all magic and stuff. Sort of half Sabrina the Teenage Witch style. -y. Anyway, we're going down. We're going down again. And then we're going to the right to get out of the kitchen and then we're going down once we're in the living room here we're going to end up back in our bedroom and what we're going to do is actually make another save don't exit um, there's no point in exiting i just done that by mistake um, but we are going like i said to make a second save now you can either overwrite your first save from earlier like i do or if you want to be safer than sorry just do it on another completely different save file literally makes no difference though But 
but the reason we had to make a save file before now, we, we're going to come up with two options again, and so we're going to take our time, but we're actually just going to click the first option, which is challenge accepted, and well, we're going to die again, so that's the second death that we need for <laughs> the other missable achievement. He tried it, he failed, you're a goddamn failure, Thomas, goddamn failure. But you get us a second achievement, so that's why we had to save where we did, and now we can just simply load back in, and then choose the second option of, you know, not uh, accepting the challenge so we don't die. So remember, take your time, don't go too fast here, and choose the go back to sleep option, which is the second dialogue option there. And very quickly after this then, we're going to be making our third save. Basically, we're coming up to the potion mini game. Now, there are two achievements directed to this. One for failing it three times, and the other for doing it the first time. So, again, as soon as you get into Auntie's sex dungeon room... Oh, wait, that sounds weird, actually. No, I won't call it that. Once we get into Auntie's room, make the save, and then just, again, smash through the dialogue, and it's going to tell us how to actually play the game. Uh, no, stupid cat. I just want to knock the hat right off your head. Bad kitty. I'm allergic to cats. So, this is how we uh, play the game. So, what you'd have to normally do is, um, on the D-pad, you press down, then left, then up. You know, until it goes all the way around. It's really, really easy, but all we're doing is pressing the wrong button. So, it's got up there, so you press down, left or right. So, we fail, or wait until the counter, the timer counts down. Fail that three times, and then <laughs> something unlucky is going to happen, and then we'll have to just reload the game again. So there we have it then. Sadly, Thomas fails for a third time. Maybe it's the glasses, maybe it's the hair too heavy on his head. Who knows? But this time then, once we load back into the game, we need to complete this potion minigame first time without failing. And like I said, it's very easy. So all you got to do is just look at what's on the screen and then use the D-pad to go with it. So the first one, as you'll be able to see here, so it'll be down, left, up, up, right, and it's literally as easy as that. So the, you've got to be quicker the more we go through it because the timer gets shorter, but it is easy enough. So you literally just press in what you see on the screen on your D-pad. Simple pimple. So, congratulations to Thomas then for actually succeeding at something. Well done. And the last one got a bit tight then with five seconds left, but again, easy enough. But before we leave, we're going to grab the sleeping mask, which is on the sofa on the right hand side first. Go into the bookcase and sort of next to the skull, it's very, uh, it can be a little bit hard to see, but very to the very left of the skull is the book. We've got a coin that we can get in there, so m make sure to grab that first. And then we're going to make yet another save because we're coming up to another missable achievement. Plenty of them, but we're going to rewrite them saves. So what we need to do now then, don't exit. I keep doing that literally by accident. It's a pain in my ass. But click on the SETI then, on the actual SETI itself. And we've got uh, this little shadow girl who's going to ask us a couple of questions to sort of say what you see kind of thing. Obviously, we're going to be getting all the answers wrong, so we're going to die again, basically. So, first of all then, 
click the horse on the crescent moon, which is the bottom option. And then click sugar cube again, which is the bottom option. We're going all bottom, baby. And then after this one, choose cheese ball, which again is the all bottom option, baby. And then for the last one, choose the chess option, which again is all the bottom baby option. After that, we're going to die, and then we can load back in. <laughs> you suck, dude. <laughs> And so once we're loaded back in, then we still actually need to complete said puzzle or riddles or whatever you want to call them to actually progress. Why do I keep doing that? Sorry, I don't know why you keep going to threaten to exit. <laughs> so we're going to click on the setty again and we're going to do the same thing again, only get it right so we don't suck and die. So first things first then, again, it is the uh, horse on the crescent moon, so we're going to click that on the bottom option. Uh, this time it's the dice, which is the top option. So we choose the dice there. And then it's the tennis ball. It's not the chocolate candy or the cheese ball. It's the tennis ball, which was the top option. And then the third one is, uh, the fourth one is a box of chocolates. And then that should get us going. That should also unlock us another achievement for completing said puzzle. And then we're good to go. So from here then, head into your inventory, grab the ladle, and then go over to the take option, and then interact with the big pot in the middle of the room. Could have literally got one from downstairs, would have made it easier, but it's not what point and click adventures do, do they? Click back on it again, and we're going to use the key this time. Again, go to take, and then use it on the left-hand side drawer on the bookcase there. So that is another item that we've got there, and then we can go down. So in the library, go to the left-hand side bookcase there, and you see the second row with the uh, books already tipped over? The one to the left of that is where we're going to be clicking, getting the coin, and then to the very right-hand side bookcase, and then on the third row, the sort of second book in, that is where we're going to click, and that is what is going to get us the next coin, and then we can go down again. Now go ahead and click on the actual cat house and there's going to be another coin for us to grab in there. And then the already open cupboard on the very right hand side, you're not looking for a specific item, just click on whatever. And that's going to get us an empty jar. Now we can go to the right hand side, to the old, is it called a botany or the, the greenhouse with the garden stuffs and stuffs? Yeah, anyway. So we're going to be using the bag and we're going to use it on the sort of skull plant thing, the, the fertilizer, weird looking thing. So now we've got an item from that, we can just head back to the left and we can actually head down now into the kitchen. And first things, there's a couple of things we're going to be doing here. The first thing we're going to be doing is using the key. So go ahead and take the key and then use it on this sort of, it's a cookie cutter, but it's like what looks like an oven or something in the middle of the room. That gives us another item. Then on the shelf, there's like what looks like an urn, but it's like a tea making thing, apparently. So click on that. That's another item we're going to be grabbing. And then go into the cupboard once again. And that's just going to get us another item. And then use, uh, go down, and we're going to use the only item that we should need here. And it's like an ordinary tea bag. I mean, it's like, I mean, it is an ordinary tea bag. Use it on the cap on the table on the right hand side. And then we're going to need to go back into our inventory. And the simplest thing that we're going to use is the um, empty jar. So click on the empty jar down at the bottom right there. Take it and then use it on this sort of. What looks like dirt smudges on the window, but it's actually supposed to resemble uh, red steam right next to the tea kettle urn death looking thing there. And then we can simply head to the right. We're into the room where it all began. And a couple of things we need to be doing. Click on the first book of the very left hand side book on the bookcase. That gives us a coin, which should now give us all five coins of what we need. Go back into your inventory, get the sleeping mask we took from the uh, our aunt's bed or whatever that is, put it on the 
lamp, so that makes the lamp go to sleep, and then click on the hat in the bookcase, sort of to the left-hand side there. So just click on that once that gets us another item, and then we can go back into our own room. So on the left-hand side, where we've got the sort of magazine and the bag, our options, if you click the right uh, left trigger, or the L2 button, it goes away, and you can actually see behind that, uh, we need a handle. But um, yeah, so if, if you don't do that, the handle is behind the bag anyway. Go ahead, use said handle on the sort of wooden barrel in our room. And that's going to get us a gear, and we can now go back into our inventory, use that gear, and use it on the wooden cuckoo clock above the wooden barrel. So that's going to get us another item, and this is going to be extremely important. We need to make a save here, right here, right now. Make sure to save. Save your goddamn game. Save it. And the reason being is because from this point, you need to go through the game and then go through the game again. But make sure to pick up the teddy bear. There's a toy bear on the floor, so save it before you pick up the teddy bear, and then we can move on with the game. So remember to save, then pick up the teddy bear, and then we can go ahead. So in the living room, go left. Once we're in the kitchen, we're going up. And then once we're in this little area, we are going to be going up again. So once we're in the library, we're going to go into our inventory, grab the five coins that we should now have collected, and use it on the tablecloth, what the lamp is on, on the middle of the table. And basically what we're going to do now, we're going to basically go back to our room. So it's down, 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 do, 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 uh, right. Sorry, I got off track again. And then down until we get to our room. We're going to have a bit of uh, dialogue again. And we're supposed to be doing a second potion minigame, but you can actually skip it this time. So you don't actually have to do this one again. You can skip it and it'll be absolutely fine. Won't affect any achievements. So press the X button or square on PlayStation. Hold it, skip it, and then we're going to end up outside Auntie's room again. It's this sort of nice view place. Only two things to do here. The first one is grabbing a big book on the very left hand side of the screen, sort of where our bag and our uh, magazine book thing is. And there's going to be a scroll on the very right hand side, just by the treasure chest there on the floor. So grab them and then watch and then just slam through the dialogue again. By the way, from this point, there is a lot of dialogue and not a lot of gameplay. It's roughly around four to five minutes. So just keep slamming through and try not to get your hand cramping in the process. Hurts after a while.
So after a lot of hand cramps and a lot of dialogue, we are finally now out of the witch's house and we are into what's quite typical of a witch game. We're into spooky, scary words. <laughs> so anyway, we need to get things what an astronaut needs now. Um, so you can't really fail this bit. We get the oxygen cylinders. They're sort of on the left hand side in the middle, sort of tucked away. You can actually pick up absolutely anything else. Um, they just get added to your inventory, but they are no use. Um, but what we need is just the four sort of astronaut things. So directly below that is the helmet. Um, I actually pick up the boxing glove, which, you know, every astronaut needs to smash up some space alien douchebags. Um, but, you know, again, you can pick up anything that you need, but it doesn't actually have any relevance to the game. Uh, the only things we need are the four things for... The what we need for the astronaut so to the right hand side now of the tree and then sort of you know up to the left sort of branch that is another thing that we need and then the boots which is sort of in the middle and when you get all four of those things it automatically smashes out the next set of dialogue to get more hand cramps with hmm You can't beat a bunch of creepy dolls, right? Right? You know, especially the the um, porcelain dolls that, you know, you can go on swings and they watch you while you sleep with that. Blah, 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 blah. Creepy as hell. Again, all we're doing is just clicking on every single doll which has the red eyes. That's it at this point. Again, you cannot fail this because you need to just click on every doll anyway. I don't know why, but uh, Beam Fabian, it's all a hell of a name. 
But once we get out of here and get through this dialogue, we're going to go into click right. Now we're going to click on the right option. And that's going to get us into this sort of little town. And there's going to be, again, quite a few things to do. A few things to collect. This is where we're going to collect all the five coins related to the achievement, which I said at the beginning of the guide. So, first things first then, the bottom right hand side of the screen, in a box, you can see the fifth out of six skulls. We're finally uh, picking up another one. And you see them in the box, that's five out of six skulls. Now let's go and collect the coins. The first one, uh, they're quite well hidden, the very top left hand side of the screen, on top of this sort of broken whatever it is, that's the first coin. So, he wouldn't rather be looking for them at all. Right up high, in the sort of back side of the screen, there is another one in the broken sort of roof there. The third one is sort of behind the bag. So again, press the left trigger button and you'll be able to see it more clearly. But there is, where our bag icon is, there is a coin directly behind that. So that would be coin three out of five. The fourth coin is to the right hand side of the screen. As you can see, just peeking out of the door right there. So, again, you've got to be quite good, and you've got to be quite on point with the reticle. And then the fifth one, as you can see, the broken teacup, sort of to the right side of the pig. That is where the fifth one is, so that is going to unlock us the achievement. That is for collecting all five coins. And from this point, just click on the uh, treasure chest, uh, sort of to the left of the house right there. And what we need to do then is go back into inventory. That's going to unlock us another achievement, the lucky coin achievement. And then go into your inventory, grab all five coins, what we just collected. Eventually we're going to do it. There we go. Take that. Put them inside the pig. By the way, I highly advise don't go put in coins inside pigs in real life. They don't like it and you won't like it either. Yep. Full of life advice, me. So, now we've got that part done, we're going to go down now, and then before we head off, have a look at this tree in the middle of the screen, find the sixth out of six skull, that is finally going to get us the collectible, the skull collector achievement as well, so now we don't have to worry about any more skulls. Click on the left hand side, top hand side of the screen, and that is where this creepy porcelain bloody doll is, then go down. Then go to the right, for now we're not doing anything in here, for just now. And then go ahead, click up, and then click right again to go back into the town for a bit more dialogue. Okay, so maybe not that much, uh, but once we're back out here, go left, a little bit more dialogue happens. <laughs> this creepy tarantula dude. Imagine that being inside you, <laughs> you know, eating you in the night, you know, going down when you're sleeping and spiders going in your mouth and that when you're sleeping. <laughs> So we're going to try and help him out. So from here, the main area, go down, go down again. And just underneath the tree, you can just see the, the key sticking out. So click on that. That's going to grab us the key with all the spider webs and spiders on it. And the spider sacks and stuff. Now we can go right and we can go back up. And then back in the main area, we're going to the left again. So you're probably wondering why there's nowhere to go. But what we're going to do is actually click on the very right hand side of the screen on the bush. That is where Bean, the robot fox, is. And all we need to do is go into your inventory, get his sort of, I mean, the, 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 the robot um, leg, arm, I don't know, whatever you want to call it. Interact with his obviously missing leg, then do the same, get his eye out, interact with his missing eye, and more dialogue's going to happen. It's, it's certainly becoming more dialogue-y than gameplay-y the more we get into the game. Don't know if you can tell. But 
this is actually it now. This is actually the end of the game. So you're going to get hand cramp while slamming through all the dialogue. It's going to go through a whole lot of crap, unlock another two achievements, and then the game's going to end. And we need to reload our game and go through this bit again. But it luckily is a lot shorter. So keep getting hand cramp or quickly buy a turbo controller and <laughs> use that or something. So once back at the main menu then, we've only got two achievements left to get now. And again, luckily it's only going to take us around 10 minutes or so to get there. So load back in the game. This time do not pick up the teddy bear. So do not pick up the teddy bear. And then we should just carry on. So go up, left. When we're in the kitchen, go up again. We're basically going up back towards the library now. So up once again. At this point, we should still have all of your five coins that we collected through various books through this sort of first section. So we're going to take them and we are going to use them on the tablecloth on where well, on what the lamp is on. So after that's done, go down, go down again, go to the right. We're going to go back up to our room basically now. Again, skip this uh, potion uh, mini game. We don't need this at all. Uh, go ahead, skip that, and then we're going to end up back outside our auntie's. No, don't say sex dungeon again. No, don't. Just don't say it. Don't think it. Don't even acknowledge its existence. But we're going to end up in this lovely little spot again. So again, it's the scroll which is on the right side of the screen um, by the treasure chest and the big book on the left hand side sort of next to our, uh, where our bag is so grab those two and then it's again I haven't cut anything we're just going to go through the entire sort of cutscene again so this is going to be another sort of five minutes or so so use your other hand if your hands already cramped up unless you're lonely and you sort of masturbate a lot then you should be fine <laughs>
So we come back to this paper bit then, again we just need to find the, I don't know why I um, uh, pick up the boxing glove again, but I do, because why the hell not? We just need to get, pick up the four bits of paper with the bit of astronaut stuff on it. Again, you can't be faded in this bit, we just gotta click on all the dolls with the red eyes to make them unread, to make them flip off, or fudge off. Get away! But this time we're not going to the right into the town straight away, we don't need to, we're going to go straight to the left and we're going to just go ahead and help the spider this time, get the achievement for that. So, there's only one other way we can go right now, and that is to the right, and we're going to get uh, quite a bit of dialogue, and we're basically going to just go ahead, grab the key, straight away, help the spider out, job is a good one. <laughs> so, from here, with weird porcelain doll, go down, go down again. And then before we go right, grab the key, which is underneath the tree, and you are rhymist and you didn't know it. Oh, damn it! Anyway, once that's done, go to the right. Up. Up your jolly way. Up your guts. And then to the left this time. 
And this is where we're going to get the spider slay achievement for helping the spider. And from here, we're just going to click on the right-hand side on the bush. We're going to give Robo Fox Beanbog, ha, huh, Beanbog, his um, leg and his eye anyway. And then that is going to be the end of the game. So finally, how did you? What did you think then of this visual novel slash point-and-click adventure? Was it fun? Was it not? Was it a bit too tedious? But was it fun? Did you fancy the witch, or did you fancy the cat for some reason? I don't know. Maybe you're into that kind of stuff. But anyway, I'm just going to leave it here. All we're doing now is just blasting through all the dialogue. You're going to get the final achievement for not for finishing the game without picking up the teddy bear earlier. So I'm leaving it here. So thank you so much for watching, guys and gals. Don't forget, of course, to like, comment, and subscribe. Check me out on my socials as well. Instagram, Twitter. Also on Patreon as well if you want uh, ad-free videos without having to come onto YouTube. I'm going to put my videos on there on Patreon, so check that out if you would like. But that is that. Thank you so much again for watching. Big shout out, of course, to TimG84 and the rest of my Patreon supporters. But thanks again for watching, guys and gals, and I shall see you in the next one. Big love. <laughs>